In the last video, we talked about the MITRE ATT&CK framework and how awesome it was. It allowed us to go in and identify a specific threat or APT. And then from there, we were able to link to its TDPs, its tactics, techniques, and procedures, which basically were its playbook, that attack group or the threats playbook, and then how to remediate those different TTPs and break the cyber kill chain. So now we're going to jump in and take a look at the MITRE ATT&CK framework in action. All right, here we are on the MITRE ATT&CK framework page. Just Google it. It's attack.mitre.org. Here we go. Now, where do we get started? Well, if we scroll down here, we get to see part of this MITRE ATT&CK. All right, here it is. Now, we're talking about TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures. How do these attackers do these things? Well, if you look down here, we have reconnaissance. We've got a column for each of these, right? We've got reconnaissance. There's 10 different techniques here. Resource development, initial access, remember, execution, setting up persistence. That's our command and control, our privilege escalation, moving up from a regular user account to an admin, you know, trying to evade defenses, credential access, discovery. We've got all kinds of things here. Lateral movement, collection of data. There's our command and control, X data exfiltration here and impact and you see of course there is a lot here now where do we get started well here we go if we click here on show sub techniques there we go and you'll see it change we still have our columns here but next to active scanning which if i hide this you see active scanning and it's got two down here it's because there are two sub techniques and and by the way all these have a different identification number assigned to them but if we click the show sub techniques it breaks it down for us so we see active scanning. They're scanning IP blocks, vulnerability scanning, gathering victim host information. Again, this is the way attackers are doing their reconnaissance. That's what we're looking at now. So they're going to look at hardware, software, firmware, client configurations, gathering victim identity information, looking for credentials and email addresses, employee names. And you can click on these. So I'm going to open employee names here, open new opening this new tab here, and it's gather victim identity information. So we're looking for employee names. That's what the bad guys are doing. And it's going to give some examples down here, like this is a sandworm team. This is a team of APT folks, right? These are the bad guys. And this is what they do. Now, how do you mitigate it? That's really what we want to know. And right here it is. They give you some information about mitigation and detection. So it says it can't be easily mitigated with prevention controls because it can't. This is information they're going to gather out there. This is OSINT data like we talked about, using LinkedIn to find that information. So really, you need to minimize the amount of sensitive data available on external parties, meaning on the web, right? So you need to take care of that. That's how you can do it. And how do we detect it? Well, taking a look at the outside of your target organization, of your organization, and looking for these things to see if they're out there. Now, this is just part of the, the MITRE. Now, let's go back to our primary one. And now, we looked at reconnaissance. We can go through an initial access. Uh, maybe, here we go, under phishing. There's spear phishing attachments and links and via services, a supply chain compromise, valid accounts, looking for default accounts. So, if we click on default accounts here, it's going to take us here. Valid accounts. It's looking for default accounts. So really what we want to look at, I'm not too concerned about examples, mitigation. Well, right there, create a password policies. And it's saying here that your applications and your default usernames and passwords should be changed immediately after installation. Absolutely. Well, what about detection? You can monitor whether default accounts have been activated or logged into, and that's done through the logs. And it's basically just monitoring your environment to see if any default usernames ever show up in the logs. Because they shouldn't. They should have been disabled. And if you detect them, then you can go in and disable them. And right now you might be thinking, so I just like go through these and click on each one? Not really. I just wanted you to see what was happening uh, at the very beginning when we take a look at all this information. But here's how best to go about it, in my personal opinion. So we're going to go over here to groups. Because remember, I said when with our threat intelligence, we need to figure out who's after us first. And then we can figure out how does that group or that APT, how do they do business? What type of tools do they use? What are their TTPs? So here's a giant group of lists. And as we scroll down, you see it's a long list. And up here, we've got the APTs and there's different names for them. And there's names for different groups. But the idea here is I would just do a search here and I'm going to search for finance. There we go. 
And the first one that comes up is APT-19. This is a Chinese-based uh, threat group that's targeted a bunch of different types of organizations, uh, industrial, defense, energy, finance, uh, pharmaceuticals, telecommunications, on and on. They're pretty busy. But let's say APT is who we are concerned with uh, attacking us. Well, what we do then is we're going to right-click here. We're going to open in a new tab. And now we're going to learn about APT-19. And you can read about them here. But what I'm more concerned with is if I scroll down here to techniques used. And now MITRE is going to list all the techniques that are associated with APT-19. So here I can go through and I can look at this list. It's not terribly long. And what I can do then is go through and work on identifying what each of these is and how they use it. And then how can I prevent their attack from being successful at this level? So the first one, application layer protocol. Now let's see, it says APT-19 used HTTP for C2 communication. That's your command and control. So trying to get back in, setting up your persistence within the target environment so you have a back door. And so right here it says they use an HTTP malware to communicate uh, okay, good. So how do I prevent that? So let's go over here. Let's look at the ID for this. Right click and open a new tab. Open that up. And right here, we can scroll down and they talk about application layer protocol. How do we detect this? How do we mitigate it? Well, right here, network intrusion prevention. So really, it, if you read through this, it says basically you need to deploy an IPS that will look for that. Specifically one uh, that does probably have a threat intel feed. And how do you detect it? Well, analyze your network data for uncommon network flows. Look for things that are abnormal. So this tells you how to mitigate it and how to detect it in your environment. So that's the first one. And we're not going to go through them all, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. This is out here. Figure out who's going to be attacking you, or most likely anyway. Go and look at the techniques that they use. And then at each technique, you can figure out, well, how can I defeat this technique and make it so that I break that link of that cyber kill chain? And as you see here, uh, there's some information here, like here's one about boot logon and auto start execution. And actually it says they like to use a malware variant that sets a specific registry key. So right there, you can check all of your hosts for the specific registry key. And you can make sure that registry changes are logged so that your SIM or other log analysis system can notify you of the changes. And as you scroll down through here, there's a whole bunch of things. There's modify registry again. They like to obfuscate files and information. So this is how we use the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Now, if you don't know who's going to be attacking you in general, well, maybe you just start off at the main section. Let's go back to the main here. There we go. Maybe you just want to go through here and select some of these like active scanning or information gathering or one of these, and you want to work your way through this spreadsheet and protect your environment from these different techniques. And you can do that because, again, this is going to take time. It's not something that's done overnight. But if you wanted to work on preventing, I don't know, external remote services, you could just click on that and you could read about it and then go down to the mitigations. And right here, here's some ways to mitigate it. Here's ways to detect it. So if you work your way through this and do one a week, you'll be doing pretty good within a year's time. And your security will really shine. And that is the MITRE ATT&CK framework and how you can go about using that to help secure your environment and protect yourself against those evildoers out there. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.